Hello, I'm Martinez and welcome to my devlog number 2 of Game Ready Steady Ship. Oh, and if you are new to the project, I'm suggesting you to watch the devlog number 1, where I'm mostly pitching the game idea. Or you can find it on Steam, by the way. I left the link in the description. So, in this devlog video, I'll show you how I made conveyor physics. What aspects will be covered? I'll show you a little bit of code and I'll try to explain why and how it works. A little bit of animation setup process and a very small portion of shader coding. Conveyor track. Well, as you may already know, the player must construct the conveyor line and boxes should be moving on top of the conveyor track. To make things more simple to explain, I'll try to separate mechanics into different parts. First, we will discuss the conveyor track then, we will see how the boxes should work. And lastly, how the player is able to assemble the conveyor line. I made a different length conveyor part, so I will have more different ways to build a conveyor line. Every conveyor part has a collider, a kinematic rigid body and a renderer with two materials, which we will discuss later. I create a script called conveyor track and add it on a conveyor part. This script will move the objects that touches it in a given direction. When I was making the conveyor, I had a couple of different approaches. In the game prototype, the boxes are moving along a given path. It's a simple way, however, it's no fun when there are no unexpected events, like uh, boxes getting stuck or falling over. So I reworked the prototype approach and made the movement based on physics. So how does it work? Actually, it's pretty simple. I record the rigid body position, then I'm shifting it in a given direction multiplied by speed. And then I return it to the starting position with rigid body move position function. It's weird, right? Moving forward then moving backwards. Yes, it's weird, but it works. Actually, it works because move position is interpolated and rigid dot position is not. So one of them is affecting other objects and the other one is not. It's kind of confusing, but I believe once you get it, you get it. Okay, so we need a lever to start the conveyor. As you can see, it works, but the problem is the arrows are not moving. Remember when I said there are two materials on the renderer? So, one material is used for a base conveyor mesh and the other one is used only for the track. So, how to make it move? Actually, it's even more simple than you think it is. I have two different textures for the arrows. One is yellow, meaning it's active, and the other one is gray which indicates not active. When I start the conveyor, I simply swap these materials from not active to the active one. Well, that part is done, but the arrows are not moving. Of course they are not moving, why should they? We need to write a shader for that. Well, if you don't know how to write a shader, it's also possible. However, you will see how much easier to do it with shader. So, what we need to do is simply move the UV coordinates in a vertical direction. Now let's add the speed and voila, it works completely fine. Let's move to the boxes. Once we made a conveyor track that works with any physics body, we can start working with the boxes. So the boxes can be simple cubes with a texture, but I believe we are better than that. So I made a box 3D mesh, but with bones. Why, you may ask. So when we hit the ground, they get squished and deformed. I animated a couple of different destroy animations and made a little function to call a random destroy animation once it gets destroyed. Also, I think it needs a bit of foam spill particle. Nice. Of course, this could be better. We could make animations based on the direction of impact, but I believe this already looks okay. Wait, there are conveyor parts that fold up and fill the boxes with foam. Well, it's pretty much the same process. I made another model mostly out of planes and created two animations, folding up and closing down after it's filled with foam. I just simply change the mesh once it's folded and filled. That's it with the boxes. Draggable conveyor part. Oof. That's a bit longer story, but I'll try to make it short. Simply, once a player goes close enough to the conveyor part and presses the grab button, it adds the spring joint component. Player can move around like before, but now 
the conveyor part is attached to the player's hand's placeholder. Once the player drags the conveyor part to the placement point and press the place button, it snaps to the placement point and awaits the construction. If player press the rotate button, it rotates 90 degrees. Or if use the joystick, it rotates the part in a given direction of a D-pad. As soon as it placed, the conveyor truck is added to the conveyor line array and once the conveyor is started, it activates the conveyor track script. Nothing too difficult. Time for a conclusion. So now the conveyor can move physics objects in a given direction. Player can start a conveyor and also assemble the conveyor line. Once the boxes fall down to the ground, they get destroyed. I believe that's a good progress. If you made this far, please leave a like and if you like this game, of course, please add it to the wishlist on Steam. Link is in the description. Thank you for watching and maybe if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask in the comments. Bye bye.